Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the one, the only, Lauren Ash. Hi! What's going on? Oh man, so happy to be here. I mean, we are, we're just saying we're in studio, yes. West Hollywood. Come on, it's the best. Listen, I was going to say actress, comedian, star of many of our favorite TV shows, but, I mean, m many of my favorite TV shows, but we really need to say musician. We can add it now. It's official. Now it's I official. know. Yes. It's like you've given birth. I have. You know what? It was a, yeah, it was a long gestation process, really, like most of my life. But uh, we're here now, and the baby is in the world, and it couldn't be better. What, like, was it, you know, I mean, because most people think of you, you know, as an actress, as a comedian. Like, did you come from Canada to L.A. to pursue acting and now this music, you know, or was it like I'm going to go to L.A. to pursue acting or music or comedy, and it's all in me, and the acting thing just kind of hit first? You know, I really kind of picked picked a lane early on to be in the comedy world and the acting world. I've played guitar since I was like 13. My my honest dream, when I, if you had asked me when I was like in high school, 15, 16, 17, like I really wanted to be in a rock band. Like I really wanted to be a rock star, but I was like, but I also would love to be an actress and that's cool too. So throughout my time, like at the Second City, which is the comedy uh, theater where I started, I was very musical. So I took my you know, <laughs> mediocre guitar skills, um, which is all you need. Uh, and I would do a lot of comedy songs and stuff like that while I was there as a part of the show. So music has kind of always been there, but I've never really thought about actually pursuing it in any sort of like significant way. It's always just been something I've done if it isn't the comedy stuff, um, you know, at home by myself for myself. And then this year I was like, no, this year I'm going to do it. Well, we did talk about, I mean, it is out there. You can Google it. You yes. know, you are a public figure. So we yeah. all know, you know, you turned 40. Like, yes. does that have anything to do with it? Like, why now? Yeah. So for my 40th birthday, I decided that I wanted to live my teenage dream and front a rock band. So I hired a band to play a concert with me. I forced my uh, loved ones to come and watch me sing. Um, and it was the best night of my life, like by by far, the best night of my life, the most fun I've ever had. I feel like I came alive. And one of the guys in the band was like, do you write your own music? And I said, well, yeah, but I've like not really played it for anybody. And he's like, oh, we should you should come to the studio and whatever. And so I played him this song that I had written um, like three or four years ago. And he was like, I played him a bunch, but that one he was like, let's do that. That one feels like it's like the most fully realized of all the songs. And so that's now I know. And here we are which is so cool. Well, now I know. I mean, you've also now charted on Billboard. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, are you, well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. Are you shocked? You know, I mean, you're charting on Billboard. Like, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a great song. But Thank you. But are you shocked that it's. You know, it's, well, here's the thing. Nobody buys music anymore. So if you can try and rally any sort of following that you have to purchase your 99 cent dollar song, you can chart on Billboard. That was my kind of after I had done some research about it. And so I tried to activate, you know, the existing fan base that I have on social media and it worked. And it was very early on when I learned that it was like attainable. That just became my single focus. I was like, if it's attainable, that's the goal. That's what I want to do. If high school me knew that I had charted on the Billboard charts, she would have died. Like, that was just the coolest possible thing. So, yeah, to, to come in at number five on the alternative digital download chart was, like, pretty cool. That was, like, that's like a life moment, you know? I, I have to, like, get a copy of the print copy. I mean, it's just, it's the best. It's kind of a big deal. It's a big deal, right? Like, it's imp like it, I think that's impressive as somebody who... I'm sure that in the algorithms of social media, a bunch of my followers don't even know yet that I have this song because, as we know, we don't see every post that everyone we follow posts. Um, so, yeah. So I hope to, like, just continue and grow from there. I mean, have you been, you know, seeing that, you know, wait, Dino from Superstore can sing? Like, yes. are people starting to say that There now? is a lot of people who are are kind of like, I had no idea. So I made a TikTok where I— I put like a side by side video of Dina playing guitar in season one, which was in, I think, the second episode of season one. Um, she plays a Spanish song. And uh, and then I was like, you well, you should have known all along. Like the signs have always been there. You just weren't paying attention because uh, that was obviously really me playing. And the reason why they put that in there was because they knew that I could play some guitar. And um, she has a couple singing moments over the course of the uh, the season. So, 
yeah, so it's been really fun to kind of blow some blow some minds, melt some brains. Like, what is your process of, like, writing a song? I mean, do you feel the – and wh- how did this song come about? Because I've listened to the lyrics. It yeah. seems like, you know, it's a breakup song. Yeah. You know, it's funny because people are just hearing it for the first time, but I did write it a few years ago. And so the relationship that it's regarding is so far from my mind. And it was also a very short kind of relationship, which I think also makes people go like, what? Um, but I think there's something about the intensity of a short-term relationship where it's it like flames out very quickly that there's like bigger emotions there. There is for me in some way. And that's like great fodder for songwriting, right? Like if you're in a kind of lovely long-term, you know, five-year relationship that, you know, you kind of grow apart. It's like, I guess there's some, you know, you can mine some stuff there, but the raw, you know, visceral anger that you really get out of a really crappy, uh, you know, two-month-long situation. I think that that's, that's really the great place to go. Um, so yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's so funny because I can't write lyrics and then put them to music. My brain just won't go. So I just literally find it at the same time. Like, I don't really have melodies that come into my head. It's like it's like improvised. And I just keep, if I have a thought, I have to pick up the guitar immediately and try and find it. And then just keep noodling, keep finding it until it sits somewhere. So typically, like, I'll write a song in... 20 minutes like I'll write the, wow. and then it just becomes like refining it and, and bettering it and finding changing here and there but just like the bare bones kind of like what the idea is and the general kind of melody and stuff like that usually comes to me like so quickly in like a fever and then it's just the like the time it takes to make it something that's listenable wow <laughs> does the person that you wrote this oh so lovely song Thank for you. know that it's them I don't know why well, we're totally out of contact I think if he heard it he would know <laughs> if he heard it he would absolutely know for sure for sure for sure uh, you know listen the way things work today someone's gonna send it to someone who's totally gonna... yes I could see that and you know what I hope he does listen to it <laughs> then he'll know <laughs> then he'll know yeah like growing up you know because you say you wanted to be a rock star since yeah. we're in, like growing up like what type of music did you love like who were your inspirations oh I was so into pop punk like Blink-182 um, that kind of era of music but I also like really wanted to be Courtney Love like minus anything problematic like just her as a as a show person a performer her yeah. aesthetic her whole vibe like that was the dream I would have like died to be in like Veruca Salt or Letters to Cleo or whatever Um, Or whole, of course, yeah. I can see this, you know, from this, because to me, this song, because like when I listened to it, I was like, this is giving me like 80, you know, like 90s, a little like early 2000s realness. Totally. And that's what I said to them. I was like, I want to write like pop punk music. Like that's the music that I listened to the most growing up. It's the, it's, I think it's fun. There's a real resurgence happening right now, or this is what the TikTok kids keep telling me. They're loving finding bands that for, you know, anyone my age is like, Oh yeah, we we listened to them twenty years ago. Right. Um, but but young people are finding it now, and I was like, I think this is the time. That was part of it too, you know. Uh, 